Open your ears, I promise this will take a second. Put you on game, my brother, teach you valuable lesson. Respect yourself, we happy, no need to reminisce. No need to worry, you chilling with men with confidence. Speak your mind, say what's up with your life. We can teach you wrong for right and take the darkness out your life. So what's good? What's good? It ain't nothing but a small thing. Have a seat, you can talk to us about anything. Money's car, sports, or maybe your business. Positive goals in your life support better living. A pep talk to the ones who in the darkest hour. Remember, sunlight comes after a rain shower. There's nothing wrong with the man who takes notes. Don't take this as a joke. These words are well spoken. Teammates, cause we playing to win. I have a seat at the table with some men with confidence. And welcome to Men in Confidence Sherry, where we, the men of a certain age, share our thoughts, ideas, and opinions in confidence. And today, we are joined by the whole crew. We have myself, Tony, we have Sean, we have Terrence, and we have Rhino. So we're going to go one by one and say hello to everyone. Hello, Sean. Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? Hello, Rhino. What's good, people? And hello, Terrence. Greetings and salutations, people. All right, all right, all right. So today we are continuing our discussion on Black History that we did last week. We're doing it again this week. And we left off with a few questions still on the table. So we want to start this week with the idea. So at the very end, Terrence was mentioning that our generation, the generation that we're in, because we are a group of men of a certain age, we are a little seasoned, that our group in particular are like the first generation to grow up with what we would consider to be full rights. Like we did not experience the segregation and everything that some of our previous generations went through. So we're going to start with this question thinking with with that in mind what group is more lacking in their knowledge of black history who would you say is missing more of the knowledge of black history and I'll leave it up to the fellas to answer the question I would love to uh, come after the throat of the youth but youth these days are actually quite informed I've I've discovered they uh, they're they're ahead of their game. Um, I think the most uninformed people are those who choose to remain ignorant to the plight. Those who refuse to look at the other side, so to speak. Those ones who rest in their laurels that what they know and believe to be right is what's right and everybody else is just being ridiculous. Rather than stopping and taking note and, and, and questioning within themselves that, hey, there's a reason why these people are upset. Why don't I investigate and find out more? And, and, and when you do that, you realize that this world that you live in it's a lot bigger than you think. And I'll pass on to whoever wants to take it. That answer to me is a very broad spectrum answer because there are a lot of people, I think, on both sides of the aisle, so to speak, who kind of fall in that category. I think we all know some what I tend to refer to as ABMs, angry black men who blame everything on the white man and they just kind of point their finger so to me i feel like some of them fall into the category that you were just describing people who are lacking knowledge because i think if they had more knowledge they might be open to the idea of well not everything is this one way and some of the onus may be on myself because I don't know enough about my own history to take pride in where we come from to possibly be encouraged and motivated to do better or be better or whatever the case may be. And then there are those who just like, well, that was a long time ago. You know, my great grandpappy did whatever, whatever, but that ain't me. So I feel, like I said, I feel like that's a very broad spectrum answer. It For is. me, it was, it was I, meant to be broad. 
but go ahead. For me, because I think we're trying to kind of narrow this down a little bit, because if we can't get specific, we can't really address the issue. And for me, I think the group who's probably the lack, the least aware, honestly, and this is still somewhat a broad answer, but I would say our generation all the way around. And the reason I say all the way around is because there are a lot of people in our generation who know some African-American history. There are some in our generation who know a wealth, but what are they doing with it? There are some who are aware of what's happened, but are turning a blind eye to it. And then there are some who just deny the fact that it happened, that anything ever happened. And I feel like that congregation of people is where the problem is at. And again, I know that's still not very specific, but I just want to kind of try and bring the blinders in a little bit, sharpen the focus a little bit more, if we could, and kind of drill this question down a little bit more as the conversation goes. I, I get that. I, I see what you're, you know, what you're saying as far as I'm being specific. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to put my tinfoil hat on here or something, and pull some, some, some gems of knowledge from out the sky. I feel like I can't compete with you guys because you've done a whole part that I wasn't on, and there's been some really, really great uh, points made. But you know, I was when I first heard the first segment of this, I was definitely clapping because that part where you said we are you know, probably the first generation that doesn't have, you know, the direct stories of seeing a whites only fountain other than, you know, in a museum or something like that, you know, and not actually, um, you know, taking part or actually, you know, actually physically feeling it, you know, our, our group, our generation, you know, we had those rights and freedoms were in place, you know, by our predecessors before us. So, when we ask a question like who's lacking most in the knowledge i started thinking more on along the lines of you know really honestly uh not to to directly point the finger but then to fall on like okay what are we talking about like which race which which is genders those type of things and in my mind the the first two that came up um rhino was giving credit to our like young black men, our young black generation that is paying attention. Some of them are. Um, I I have a fear for them because of an old quote uh, by Edmund Burke: "Those who forget history are doomed to repeat it." I think that our generation, being that we weren't exposed to it directly from that standpoint, can feed and buy into really quickly that all things are fair and equal these things are to be forgotten and gotten over let's forget about them and move on and i think that's a very dangerous precedent to set that's the biggest thing that i worry about going forward so when i say that uh which you know so to to, to focus mostly on the question which which area which people do i think uh, don't know the most um between young black men and young and younger this younger also caucasian generation and things like that they're not because we're not exposed to it on a regular and we're more exposed to all things are supposed to be equal everybody's trying to embrace and grasp that and we're getting away from what well, we don't want to learn about you know a history a culture where things were bad and this and this and that so let's go forward and so and then i'm worried about well you know okay we're gonna mess around and repeat the mistakes of the past you know to say it from that way you're right there are some abms i probably qualify as an a <laughs> as, as an angry black man holding on to because they're still you know even though we're the first generation to we still have our our rights and stuff in place we still were we still have our stories our generation still has those little those little left field stories that, you know, and, and I'll be surprised, I'll be the first one to tell you, I was surprised a couple of times, you know, I, I could never go fully blind because then you get into a situation that reminds you, oh yeah, that's right. 
I'm a black man and we got history in Alabama. <laughs> we got we had history in Mississippi. We got history. Yeah, there's certain places I don't want to be. Me and the wife were just talking about traveling through West Virginia. You know, the tire blows out the wrong way. What house do we go to to say, hey man? Can I borrow your luggage? <laughs> no, we got to get out of here. What time is it? The sun's about to go down. I feel like I'm in the middle of the hood in Harlem in the middle of West Virginia. We got to go. <laughs> so I'm still that very aware of it. But yeah, I know we got to dial in. My my answer is more of a gender thing. I'm thinking that the, the young black males who don't want to pick up a book anyway and don't want to really <laughs> immerse themselves and like try to think about, you know, the past and all that kind of stuff might be the the ones to me that are the most in danger of like not having this forward knowledge between them and the young white generation who doesn't want to talk about it anyway. So you're saying the younger generation? Basically. Okay. okay. Appreciate that, Sean. I'm going to follow that up and I'm going to double down on the young folk. I think that the young black men and women, I'd say are probably about Gen Z, are the ones that are most lacking. And I'll say most lacking for more than one reason, not just in knowledge, but in realization of how important it is for them in particular. Like, for instance, like a young Gen Z that may be Caucasian or Asian, not knowing black history for them is not going to be a huge detriment to them. Whereas for a young black man or woman growing up, not having that knowledge is dangerous for you because you may get too too familiar with current times you may not realize that the rights and the privileges that you have now have only existed for maybe a generation right you don't realize that what those black and white photos that you look at for black history month were like 40 50 years ago right it, it's not a hundred 150 years ago that was within a lifetime and understand that some of the precedents some of the laws some of the things that are now pushing you towards equality there are people living today that still stand against those things and know that everybody ain't your friend everybody ain't rooting for you everybody don't want you to be equal and to me, I think that that's more important for them. And I, I think that that's why it's so important that they need to know how we got here, how they got here, whose shoulders they're standing on top of, so they will know how important it is to move forward. Like when it comes to voting, a lot of them may not be turned on to voting simply because eh, it don't seem like it's a big deal, you know? My, my friends don't vote so why should I vote well for your friends the country's already working for them you might need it to work a little bit harder for you you see what I'm saying like you have more to lose you have your 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 I hate to use a word but you're high risk so you got to treat it as such you gotta you gotta bridge that gap with knowledge and I, I'll just leave it at that good point So we we're talking about lack of knowledge, right? Who's the, who's, who doesn't have the knowledge, who should have the knowledge. We haven't really talked about that, but let's talk about who's to blame for this lack of knowledge. Why is there a lack of knowledge and whose responsibility is it to teach it and correct it? And I'm going to throw that out to the fellas. That ought to be fun. Well, that idea of whose responsibility it is, you know, and we were talking a little bit about this off uh, off mic before we got started tonight. And in another form, the idea of the elders, K 
came up, right? And I started leaning into that conversation and idea a bit about the elders and kind of wanting to know exactly who are the elders in question here. And for me, being a man of a certain age, I feel like I'm closer to that elder than not. However, my mom's still here. My grandma is still here. I feel like personally, and this isn't necessarily trying to take away from, you know, my role in it, because I absolutely have access to information. And if I need to know something, I can go find it. I still feel like the generation that experienced the movement come through it and then see the turn i think they got a little comfortable woohoo we won and in winning that meant a little bit less of the history passed down a little bit less of the you know telling of these stories and recapping what happened because well we've turned the corner so we don't need to hold on to that anymore we want to just try and look ahead, always forward, one foot in front of the other. And true as that may be, Sean said it last time he was talking, you know, those who don't know are doomed to repeat. I'm paraphrasing because I don't want to give him even more credit than anyway, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I'm just saying we couldn't could could resist could resist being able to hit in the throat a little bit but that's all right that's all right that's continue with your continue with your <laughs> I'm sorry my bad man old habits old habits dog old habits but my point here was once that corner had been turned and you know a victory was accomplished and civil rights had been presented I think we got when I shouldn't say we, when I say we, I mean we as a collective got a little comfortable and started to take their foot off the gas a little bit and didn't keep pushing it forward. Because even thinking about things further, it's like we got an inch when we needed a yard. And now we're finding ourselves kind of seeing where, yay, we got an inch but that inch doesn't make up the full yard that we need because there's still a lot going on in a different form that still isn't good. And because things are structured in such a way, there's only so much recourse to be had and taken to kind of balance the scales. And we're starting to, that's why we're seeing more of the inequalities and more of the disproportion in our society. Okay, I've talked enough, I'm done. Okay, I wanna jump in and you fellas can rip this to shreds after I'm finished if you want to. But this is something I kind of feel strongly about. Like, who's to blame for the lack of knowledge? It's our generation. It's on us. Really though. I mean, like Terrence, you mentioned that we're the first generation that didn't experience some of the setbacks from the previous generation were also the generation that didn't experience the spin of black history as far as we know that they didn't always like Malcolm we know that they didn't always like Martin we know that a lot of the figures that are celebrated today were spit on and hated years ago like we saw that and I believe that it was our responsibility, still is our responsibility, to transmit that to our offspring, to the next generation. And I, I just believe we didn't do a good job of doing that. Like, I'm not saying that individually we have done a bad job. I think collectively we've done a bad job. And you can, you can, you can say that because you can look at the image of the black person in 2022 and see that we did not do a good job of pushing the, not the arrogance, but the pride of being 
you know, a black person, you know, the pride of being, you know, a family person, the pride of, you know, looking after your household, looking after your community, you know, of believing in a standard. And I don't know who else to put, put it on. Like I could, I could blame the generation before us. I kind of could, like I, I could see where they could have done better. But at the same time, we got the perfect blend of the knowledge and the access to the new. Like, we got taught by the old people what they knew. And we have access to the internet and the technology. Like, we got we got the best of both worlds. And we, it's like, we're, we're, we got given a cork bat and we're swinging and missing. It's terrible. Like, it's, it's. It's sad, not it's depressing me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass to the next person. <laughs> I'll take it. And Tony, thank you for that. Um, you're very, very kind in um, um, placing the blame. But I'm Was not that kind. Very, I'm not gonna be very kind. I'm not gonna say it's just us. I'm gonna say it's everybody alive in America right now that has a knowledge of what's happening. Everyone that knows that those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. My boy Charity Croft said slavery lasted 246 years. And after that, it's been 156 years of not slavery. And he goes on to explain that that is most of American history and yes it still affects us to this day so I believe that everybody is responsible for passing on this knowledge and this information to whoever needs to know it especially kids in school and, I, and that's an easy segue into critical race theory but I'm not going to get off into that um, it, it should be taught we should be informing our citizens about what our past was um, I, I have absolutely no problem with Black History Month but I do have a problem with Black History being relegated to just a month and I do have a problem with Black History having to be separated from the rest of American history it is American history all of it we can't We've got to stop glossing over stuff. All of those lynchings that we, be, that we, if, if you're not careful, you would think all of that happened during slavery and slavery is over now. We're all wonderful friends. No, those lynchings happened after slavery. All right, let's, let's stop, let's stop candy coating everything. Let's stop um, introducing sugar to it. Let's call it what it is. And, and remind people or inform people that, hey, look, we can't go back to that. We can't be that way. And whose responsibility is it? I think, I think it's everybody's responsibility. America has truly failed its citizens. And if, <laughs> if we think uh, uh, another country isn't gonna come in and use that against us, they absolutely will. I think about the the nom vets that I met, um, the the African American nom vets that I've met that have told me they didn't have a problem with us, <laughs> and and they absolutely used that against America, America's history with um, their treatment of people who weren't white, and 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 as long as we're treating this like. Um, everybody's all separate and different. No, we're American now. We're the same. If if another country comes in and attacks, decides he's going to attack America and take down this this white patriarchy, but guess what? I'm an American. I can't go back to Africa. <laughs> I can't. I can't go back to uh, Northern British. According to 23andMe, I'm descended from some dude from Northern Britain. I can't go back there. I am American. This is where I'm from. So in order for me to continue to live my life and for my family and my friends to continue to live a life in peace, I now have to stand up and take up arms and fight for the safety of this country. But my country 
still wants to think of me as three fourths, uh, three fifths of a person. No, we can't have that. We absolutely cannot. It's all of our responsibility to teach everybody better. Sean, yo, oh yeah, I, I, I think it's. I think we're all kind of saying the same thing. I just think that, um, you know, I do think we bear as as the generation, and and you know, I'm a I'm springboard again off of off of my boy's brilliant 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 statement there because it was really it really was it just it's a great segue and this is what i was i started thinking when i said that uh, whose responsibility does it fall on you know i i will will say it, it's it's ours it's this it's the generation that we didn't have like you said we had all of our rights and things like that so we can't get sucked in and fooled into the thing of you know the big push we hear we hear things like cancel culture and stuff going on right now and there is you know and i always feel that there's always been this this overall like lingering background question by everybody who is not of african-american descent did not have does not have that history behind them to kind of go you know well it's over get over it move on like it's just that unspoken question and sometimes it's spoken don't get me wrong. I have, you know, some Caucasian friends uh, who are comfortable enough with me to have asked. At least I think I still got them. They heard this podcast a few times. I may not have any more Caucasian friends. I still love y'all, man. <laughs> <laughs> to my Caucasian friends, we still good. And and I'm not on no other level stuff. But um, <laughs> going back to my point, some have asked me, you know, why can't we let it go? We we. They feel like we're holding on to it. It's past, it's history. Let's forget about it and let's move on. And I guess that's why I keep bringing up that point to say we we cannot do that. And especially in the way that everything is going now, they want us to feel like everything is all things equal. Everything's all inclusive. Hey guys, we've had Obama in the White House. Come on now, you know, we, we've had a black president everything's equal we, we straight cross the board you know and it's like well you know no no we, we still don't feel that way it is not there and the generation coming up after us they're gonna they're gonna buy into it if we if we go quiet especially since we have less stories right that question that i was talking about has always been there it was there even with our you know our grandmother and and our especially our parents before us they wanted that same question why can't y'all just let it go it was years ago just just let it go but they didn't have the time right like like tony mentioned it was you know really when you really let's okay wait a minute now let's go to the let's go to the wall in 1960s eh? ain't been that long ago you know like terrence said we got parents who still went through this stuff so you couldn't tell our parents because they had stories they still remembered being young and seeing you know the whites only signs and things like that so no you couldn't get that over on them but as we are the generation who hasn't been seeing it who they want us to believe that all things are equal this is why they're throwing things back out like we don't really need affirmative action anymore do we we don't need um um to automatically uh hire or give you know give give uh black folks the opportunity or minorities the opportunity in certain things we don't have to single y'all out anymore. yeah exactly you see what i'm saying they they i think they want to get rid of these things they think that like you know there's there's there is some folks and a and a a mindset and not only among them among some of us among some of our folk who are starting to think that's not necessary anymore you know it used to be like that now it's no longer like that yeah there's still some race they'll they'll say okay there's still racism in the country but it's in pockets here or there it's definitely a problem among some trigger happy cops we, i'm not gonna get into that but <laughs> we, we 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 know that we have that those stories of course for our young black men because of course we fear for just you know drive you want drive 
nah man i think you i think you need to wait a little bit there young man i, I don't want you driving anything by yourself at all you get back in this house at 6 p.m every night because we got get no tickets at all you know what i'm saying i'm saying you got a tail light out you can't drive your car at all you can't go nowhere <laughs> well dad it's just the light over the um the license plate no Six o'clock, be back in here. Tom, you have to turn your lights on. You be back here. I don't need you getting no tickets, getting shot. But another story, of course, we have that story to say, well, and, and even with that story, we can't, as our, as our predecessors were able to point directly to something and say, boom, this is, you know, was a clear cut case. So don't forget, it. you know what I mean? We've got, we talked about, you know, schools and, um, well, we didn't really touch on it, but I know one of the things I wanted to bring up, you know, I know that um, my daughter, other, you know, um, kids of this younger generation, I don't know how much stuff they're learning about, but they're not bringing me anything that is talking about history. Hey, uh, hey, dad, you know, give me some information on this because I'm doing a report on it. You know, the more years she's going through and get through high school, the less I'm hearing that stuff. I might have heard it when she was in third grade. You know, she's getting to be a senior. It's like, you're not doing any reports on, on anybody, Malcolm, Martin, no one. Have you, what have you learned? What, what, did, uh, what did they tell you about that for Black History Month? What are you guys doing? Because you have even some of us that's on the Board of Education and stuff that are starting to get into this inclusive thing. We don't have to get into that. It's, you know, we don't have to specifically talk about just specifically ours. You see what I'm saying? So I think it's on us to, to keep it there and to just to not forget. I know it's like, OK, you're saying don't let it go. Yep. Don't let it go. Sorry. <laughs> we can't let it go. We can't afford to let it go because, again, that's my and that's my biggest point. I We don't want to repeat nothing because if you go blind, you know, you can get you can get hoodwinked again. <laughs> all right so i want to follow that up because you made you asked a question not as yourself but as someone else that i hear all the time like why you can't just let it go why you can't just get over it right aren't we there now and you know it's normally followed by you had a black president <laughs> you know <laughs> that's what I'm saying <laughs> like that's the finish line that's, that's that was the point <laughs> that annoys me actually when I hear that yeah it, it, it annoys all of but it, it annoys okay, all so of so here, here's the thing why I'll say why I can't get over it there's too many numbers to allow me to get over it because on average black people still make less than the average white person because we own less land and we have less savings and we pass down less going from generation to generation and it's basically like imagine a video game where someone has played it 200 times and they've won 200 times in a row now you come and play and win once. Now you got one win to their 200. Like you're still 199 behind them. Like it's good. it would take so much for us to catch up to the rest of all of their generations of wealth building built on the energy and the work of unpaid labor that I won't call another name <laughs> that we all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. You know, that that, right? that non-volunteered labor <laughs> that they got for decades and decades and decades. Like I, I, I don't know. I'm it, it upsets me because it's a very short sighted look to expect for uh, people to quote unquote get over something that happened for hundreds of years when the attempt to correct it has only been around for a few years you know 
but oh well. so, I will go ahead. And, and, and talking about that question of getting over it and moving on because it happened so long ago, right? A question popped into my head because I always want to counter this argument with why do I have to let stuff go and get over something? But, you know, we can still have statues and flags and stuff flowing around because it's heritage. It's history. It's a history of what? You know, don't nobody ask other groups to get over atrocities from their past. Why am I supposed to just, you know, ah, okay, I see your point. Uh, I'll let it go. Doesn't make sense to me, you know, and I can appreciate, you know, the whole when they go low, we go high thing, but I don't know if I can really take the high road on that one. That, that's a little bit, a bit more than I can stand. Just saying. Sometimes you gotta be in in the face about things. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you you can <laughs> the high road. Take the high road. Be the bigger person. Sometimes you can't take the high road. Sometimes you gotta take that shortcut and get straight to the to the to the crux of the matter. <laughs> you absolutely do because if you don't, they won't learn anything, and they'll walk off thinking, "Oh yeah, everything is copacetic." No, it's not and this is why and you explain to them why you know put it in there I don't I don't care put it in their head let them go home and stew on that they'll remember it and they'll think about it and they'll come up with an answer and once their brain comes up with that answer they won't be able to deny it I I actually appreciate a lot of uh, um, um, the white people that I've met that are actually becoming hip to this stuff and, and 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 actually speaking out, saying no, you can't treat him like that because you're being racist. And and <laughs> once I even had a guy was like going off to me, explaining because someone used the N word against somebody, and, and and he was going off. And I'm like, I'm looking at him like, dude, if you're wondering why I'm not bothered, it's because I'm 46. I've been dealing with this a long time. <laughs> this is surprising to you. I've already, I've been living this, <laughs> but I'm glad that you're here now. Here, take your coffee and go ahead and get a donut off of the counter, and um, come back to the table. We're going to finish discuss this. <laughs> uh uh-uh, uh, I let him keep now. You keep fighting. I've had to deal with this long enough. It's your turn. Go, have at it. So, side note, you want to know who always wants you to obey the rules? The rule breakers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they always want you to obey the rules. Yeah, draw within the lines, and they're just outside coloring wherever they want to color. But okay, so we've been talking a good bit about Black history, and a lot of it has not sound very positive. <laughs> it's been kind of down. So let's try to turn the conversation a little bit, and let's try to add a little sunny day to the end of this. So what are some things that you are actually glad of today about black history? Like, is there any silver lining in all of this? Or is it just, this is as dismal as it sounds and and everything that we said so far tonight? So I don't, I didn't, and I, I know I jumped in real quick, but I, um, I recently, you know, took a, just a mini vacation, just went, went someplace, you know, um, to, um, to Charleston and went downtown Charleston for the first time. I had to do my research on it as far as going down there and and things like that. And the research, you know, ironically enough, has a lot to do with this topic we're talking about today, black history, um, you know, all these historic buildings and things that are down there, but there's also, there's historic plantations. And I didn't realize that even, even me, myself, I didn't know this fact that pretty much all of, you know, the slaves were trafficked through Charleston. 
Charleston was that main market. That was where they first came before they went anyplace else. They went there, it was a main slave market. They got sold out, whether they were going to Mississippi, Alabama, all these folks came into town to Charleston to buy. You know what I mean? It was a main hub, just like, you know, like a main LAX, Chicago O'Hare airport or something, okay? Um, but I found myself like, we're supposed to be spending this. So I, I found myself in real, homage you know i started not to i started to avoid it after i found out this stuff i started to avoid i started not to go downtown i started not to uh go look at the rainbow row and things of that nature and because that stuff was down there and then i decided against it because of i felt like it would be really paying tribute paying homage that i can't so i went because i could because it's 2022 and as a black male i'm not actually going to be looking around corners for you know, someone that's going to retrain me or anything like that. I can actually enjoy the beauty of these houses in a different way. You see what I'm saying? I don't have to look at them in that particular standpoint. I'm not actually running. I'm not, I'm not like, you know, there was a time in which, you know, it would have been like uh, black man free on the streets. <laughs> Where is your, we don't see your people. Hold on, <laughs> call somebody, <laughs> get him chained back up and back in the market, you know? So I, I walk those streets private from a standpoint of like, I because I can, you know what I'm saying? Because we can walk, then that part I'm proud of. We can still walk in any restaurant, we can go in it. And it, 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 it can't be <laughs> said, it can be tried, but it, it's not gonna hold up. You see what I'm saying? It's gonna, we, there's no, actual way to uphold throwing me out of a particular restaurant without cause. You see what I'm saying? When I go in there and my money still spends and I can walk in any place I want to walk into. And like I said, I can not, I actually got a chance to enjoy the beauty of downtown Charleston in that particular way from a standpoint of like, I can actually look at it now. I can actually see it for the beauty of what it is because of my predecessors, you know, making this possible for me. And I, I felt that pride from that standpoint. I could do anything I wanted to do. For me, it's uh, <clears throat> something that happened to me several times, but um, the two that stand out in my mind was when I was in Mississippi and I was looking for a job and um, I was working with these <laughs> with these guys and and just doing a quick job for the day and uh, for Labor Day. And this guy walked up to me, the guy that was in charge of it all. And he was like, look, man, you've got to be smarter than these other cats. <laughs> I, I, I'm putting you in charge and I want you to get this, this area situated. And I was like, yes, sir. And I took charge and for some reason, everybody listened to me. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I was exhibiting some, kind of, some sort of aura, but um, um, everybody listened to me and did what I said and we got it done. And the guy was happy. And that was a white man looking at a black man saying, look, I need you to run this. I trust you to run this. I don't trust those other guys. Uh, <clears throat> the fact that he wasn't looking at my race, but he was looking at my work ethic and he realized that I believe that this guy can get it done. And he trusted me to do it and I did it. And it happened to me again when um, I was working at a job um, I applied for the job and I know a lot of people have a lot of things to say about their former boss, but I, I really have a heart for the guy. I, I, I hope that he's doing good in my absence, <laughs> but I, I can't go back to security right now, <laughs> but he um, looked past my race, looked past all the other things that so many other people have looked at before. And he let me run the show. He came in, he said, you're the man now with the pay. Straighten this out. And I got it straightened out to the point that um, nobody wanted me to leave. <laughs> no, no, you, you can't leave. Well, give me more money. Well, okay, well, I gotta leave. <laughs> you can't stay here. Yeah, but me. just the fact that um, I had been taught as a kid that it, it, you, you present yourself the right way, you show that you're smart, you learn, you do the job, and, and you know it'll pay off. And I kind of felt like in those moments, it really paid off. And and the and the really sweet part of the deal is 
I interviewed for the job and was turned down. They went with someone else. And it wasn't a race thing either because that guy was black. He just kept butting heads with the client. And they didn't even bother to interview me again. They just say, you got it. You the man. And the other guy I did, he did out-qualify me. But I appreciate the fact that my race was not a factor in it at all. It was all, no, there's something about you. I think you can do it. I want you to do it. And I'm, I'm leaving it up to you to do it. And he let me do it. And I did it. And, and I, I, I appreciate that in terms of progress. Okay, so I wanted to make sure I was on the right train of thought here with the question, you know, positive spin on Black history, right? Um, for me, I know we had mentioned Obama a little bit earlier and how everybody kind of despises that being the pinnacle, the idea that you got a Black president, so we're good, right? And from that aspect, yes, I agree. It's not cool. However, I'm always, you know, humbled by the idea that as much as a good point that I made earlier at one point about us being the first generation born into, you know, the world with full civil rights, I always reflect on my kids and I'm thinking about my youngest and for at this point about half of his life the only president he knew was black and the inspiration that could come from that is empowering you know as a kid you know we've all been little kids and none of us at age seven eight nine were thinking i'm gonna be president because it was like man, man get out of here but for him sure why not you obviously it can happen it be, and for that that black history moments like inspiring that really kind of means something. And hopefully that little nugget of history can kind of spark something in him to say, you know what? I know people want to try and spin this narrative. You know, you started at this particular point and you endured some things, but then Dr. King and then Obama. We, hopefully that knowledge of those gaps in between where they like to pretend you started to Dr. King and then that gap between Dr. King and Obama, knowing about that hopefully will still give him a sense of started from the bottom, but we here and being able to say, we started from the bottom, but I know that we can do more and we can get way beyond where I'm at right now and I can do great things. Okay, appreciate it. So I, I'll figure I'll close this up with I'm, I'm in a similar line of thought, Terrence, where I think that like one of the greatest things I see in Black History, and, and I know that one of the first shots I took was like, who who's like who has the least amount of knowledge or who's lacking knowledge of like oh the young black people <laughs> you know taking shots at them but at the same time they are probably the biggest hope because they're growing up without the mental limitations that we grew up with like we we knew that we had to behave a certain way and act a certain way and do this to be safe and do that to be safe and they grew up without those preset limitations and they I'm not saying this facetiously or sarcastically they really do believe that they can be just as good right as anyone else and that's the way that they should believe right and as much as I want to push more knowledge of black history 
that is one thing I don't want them to lose. I don't want them to lose the thought that I could be as good as someone. Well, hold on now. Let me show you this history that shows that you shouldn't you shouldn't think like that. No, it's not like that. I want to show you that there are people that came before you that didn't have the opportunity to think like that. And now you do. So stand on it. You know, stand on the stand on the legacy of those great people. And I think that's one of the things that I like about black history is the is the history and the legacy that the new generations are leaving. Like when it's all said and done, you're going to look back at them and, and be like, you know, those were transcending generations. You know, they may not have, you know, <laughs> a boulevard named after them in every city, but, you know, just collectively, they're changing the culture. And well, I think, go ahead. Sorry, based on the point that you were making, what I'm finding in my own life being really more prevalent now is this concept that more than one idea and truth can be true at the same time it's true that we have faced a whole lot of adversity it's also true that we can do amazing things in spite of that and i think that is what I was really trying to say, and you kind of helped me put those words together with your last comments, Tony, was just that though we started in one place and had to face a lot of adversity, we are capable and have done a lot of great things. And the two will coexist and put together, they are what makes you. They are what makes Black people. They are what makes our contributions to this country so important and it makes them important for everybody you know as i'm talking i'm reminded of a, a little clip that i sent the group just kind of as a funny last week that little nickelodeon thing um about contributions in uh um, black history and i always think of the last little bit of that with the traffic light because you know if there wasn't any and they show the cars crashing like that's a pretty good dang explanation of just how important sometimes contributions can be. So, yeah, it's been hard. We still have a long way to go. We've got a lot of things that we deal with. They're not the same, the aggressions that we had up front. They're little microaggressions and backdoor things and, you know, whatever you want to call it. But in spite of that, we can and will go on we will be better we will continue the agenda forward and being aware of both is a beautiful thing i appreciate it so i think it's about time to wrap it up so unless anyone has anything that they want to add on i'm going to pass to terrence for the close well as always i want to Thank everybody for listening. Like, share, and subscribe. God bless you. Good night. Deuces. Peace out, everybody.